welcome again to Pastor Talks. Now, what I do during Pastor Talks is I share in my time, my personal time in the Word. And the reason that I do this is I hope that it encourages you in your walk with Christ. Or whatever it is that you're going through today, I hope that this encourages you. But in this encouragement, I hope that you are encouraged to share that encouragement with someone else. That at the end of the day, the word is light. And it's meant to be shared with people that are living in darkness. So I hope that that inspires you to do that. Now we've been studying through the book of Colossians together. And in the first two chapters, he doesn't cover anything that's incredibly difficult to understand. He starts by saying that they have been given something that is immensely good. The gospel, the truth of the gospel. And he says that he recognizes that they're growing in that and that he wants them to continue growing. Keep growing in your understanding of who Jesus is. And then in chapter 2, he starts to draw this distinction in what it means to grow in your relationship with Jesus. And what it means is to focus on what he's given us. To focus on the spiritual life and the spiritual truth that is from the gospel because of all that Jesus has accomplished. Now, he also takes the time to explain that there are people that will try to pull them away from that truth, to lead them to another truth that has to do with what this person has said or this event that is happening. He tells them to focus instead on this new thing that's been given to them. And he asks them, he says, if these things are true for you, then why then would you dictate yourself in a way that is physical? So I'm going to keep reading here. Chapter 3 of the book of Colossians, starting in verse 1. It says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above and not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears then you will appear with him in glory. Reaffirming that there is this thing above that we're called to focus on. And that when we do, when we focus on this thing that is above, that is heavenly, that is good, then our life is found in him. That we're, we appear in glory like he does. Go ahead and keep reading with me verse 5. It says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked, and you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Sicilian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The distinction that is made so apparent between this spiritual life that's been given to us that we're called to focus on and this earthly thing that is trying to pull us away is the difference between good and not. That all the things that he lists that are earthly, that are from earth, don't set your mind on things that are from earth. Each one of them is not a good thing. Each one of them is something that we wouldn't actively go out and seek. So all of those things don't exist in God. That everything that God is, is in fact good. That peace is God, and life is God, and love is God. And the list goes on and on and on of what God is. And what God is not is what this world is. So we're being asked to look like him. Now he says, put off the old self, 
which was active in those things and put on this new self, which is being renewed. This is a process where we start to look more and more like this God that creates these good things. Go ahead and keep reading with me. It says, put on then as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So also you must forgive one another. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's it. The previous paragraph that we read and this paragraph is the distinction between the things that we shouldn't be focused on and the things that we should be focused on. The way that we shouldn't look and the way that we do look. What Jesus looks like and what Jesus doesn't look like. This is it. This is the distinction. This is the thing that we've been called to. This is the thing that he's asking them to grow in love one another, have patience for one another, teach one another, build one another up, show one another the peace of Christ dwells in you, that this thing is is living inside of you and it's transforming you and it's renewing you into the thing that God has called you to be. That's what he's asking them to do. Now in this final section, we're going to see him shift gears really drastically. And so he's going to change topics And what he's doing is he's addressing something specific that this church is dealing with. It says in verse 18, Wives, submit to your husbands as it is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work healthily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you have a master in heaven. That's kind of a dramatic shift. Wives, look like Jesus to your husbands. Husbands, look like Jesus to your wives. Children, have respect for your parents in the way that you would respect the Lord because that pleases the Lord. And then he goes on to talk about Slaves, bond servants, people that owe a debt and pay it by working for someone. And he asks them to work hard as if for the Lord, not to be people pleasers, not just because you want them to see you doing the work, but because you want to love them through service, because it's the right thing to do. In all the things that you do, <clears throat> do them as if you're doing them for the Lord. At the end of the day, what this chapter is asking us to do is also very simple. Look like Jesus to the people in your life, to all of the people in your life, to your family members, to your co-workers, to the people that work for you, to the people that you work for. It doesn't matter the person. Give them patience. Give them peace. Give them life. Give them love. Teach them. Encourage them. Build them up. Those are the things that he's asking them to do. And it doesn't matter if you're a son 
or if you're a parent. And it doesn't matter if you're an employee or you're a slave or you're a shop owner or you're an employee of the shop owner. None of those things matter. What's been given to you, the inheritance that's been given to you, the spiritual thing that has been given to you can't be taken away. And it should be the thing that leads your entire life. Grow in that. Don't listen to the voices that are trying to pull you away. Grow in the things that last, the things that are spiritual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. But before I pray, I want to encourage you to find an opportunity to dive into that. That each one of us needs encouragement and teaching and opportunities to be with the Lord. Our church knows that. And so we've created an opportunity for people to come and find that tonight. Every Wednesday night moving forward from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to be here at the church in the sanctuary, the main worship area. And we're just going to do a couple worship songs. And we're going to encourage one another to walk in the ways that we've been called to. If you can be there for that, it's just one hour. I hope that you will. I hope that you'll choose to be encouraged and that you'll choose to be in the spirit with us. And if you know someone that needs that encouragement, I hope you see the opportunity to bring them into that so that we can lift them up with you. Also, remember that we encourage you to grow on your own throughout the week. Seek the Lord in all the things that you do. and He will bless the work of your hands. So I'm going to pray. I hope your day is blessed, and I hope I see you tonight. Father God, In you there is nothing but good, and because of you we have experienced nothing but good. That what you've given us is not something that we've earned, but it's something that you wanted to give us. Father, help us to be children that look like that. To do the thing not because someone deserves it, but because we want to show them the love that you've shown us. Father, we love you so much. You fill us with all the things that are important. And you remind us not to focus on the things that are not important. Help us to draw near to our spiritual relationship with you and let go of the things of this world. You're good to us, Father. We're thankful for you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray.